God promises us whatever we go through, uh, he'll always be with us and he'll never give us anything that we can't withstand. It's a story of overcoming. And uh, when I met Brad for the first time, uh, I saw his energy, I saw his enthusiasm, his excitement, not only for the Lord, uh, but for what God had for him. I was lost, I didn't even know to pass out to the deaf athletes there. And then when we came back home, I continued, we continued to pass this book out wherever we went and uh, with the hope that people would be encouraged, inspired to not give up with whatever they're going through. And I love how you're going also more intimately for sharing the heart and passion about this, for following God's guidance to get this made. Go! You have to be better than the best. In this match, anything can happen. This is a sport you can play. Welcome to Shalom Worlds Beyond the Vision, a show that features faith-based film and television. I'm your host, Joelle Marin, and today we're going behind the scenes of the new film, Never Give Up. Welcome to the 15th World Games of the Deaf. I'm Dan Court, along with tennis legend Stan Smith. I really thought newcomer Brad Minns would have a great shot against the reigning gold medalist. We're in the third set. Osborne is serving for the match. There are some unique rules for deaf tennis. You can't play with hearing aids. Which means they're playing in complete silence. Brad, my mixed doubles partner, I promise you, this will be the best match you've ever seen. Men's has been deaf since age three, had a high fever as a child. I'm afraid it's not good news. Between 80 and 90% hearing loss. Osborne leaves, Sporty Love, five games to love, third set. Match point. Osborne, God, help me. Now you have to make some hard decisions. Most families choose sign language. I, I don't know what you're signing. Is there another option? Teach them to lip read, get a pair of high-end hearing aids. But institutionalization would probably be best. He's always going to be a deaf kid in a hearing world. Joining us is the producer, Rick Eldridge, and the executive producer, Brad Menz. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to be with you. Great to be here today. I'm so excited to have you both here with us today. Brad, this story, you're executive producer, but it's also based on a real life story, your story. And I am just so honored to have you here with us today. Could you share a little bit more about your story and how has your determination and faith played a big role in getting this film to actually be made? Sure. I wrote a book in 2013 called Never Give Up to share with the deaf community in Bulgaria. My wife and I were asked to coach the deaf tennis team. And the reason why I wrote this book was to share how God turned my life around. I was lost. I didn't even know. And I met the Lord at the gym reading a scripture off the back of a guy's shirt. And ever since that moment, that was the greatest day of my life. And I just had to tell somebody. And so I wrote this book called Never Give Up. We took it with us to Bulgaria to pass out to the deaf athletes there. And then when we came back home, I continued, we continued to pass this book out wherever we went and uh, with the hope that people would be encouraged, inspired to not give up with whatever they're going through. And along the way, people started saying, Brad, you should turn this into a movie. We kept passing the book out. People kept coming up saying, Brad, you should make a movie. And so I wrote it down on my prayer request at a Bible study I attend on Thursday morning. And so the gentleman in the Bible study introduced me to Rick Eldridge. And one thing led to another. And here we are. We have a movie. And it's been so inspiring to hear everybody's responses that have seen the movie at the premiere. Everybody loves it. It's been great. Thank you so much. And, you know, it's amazing how scripture can really change our hearts and that you saw that at the gym and 
you know, Rick, I want to talk to you a little bit about the title, Never Give Up. It's based on Hebrews 12, 1. Can you share with us more about that verse and what you're hoping that this film actually does for the audience? Well, I think it's a, it's a, a verse of, of a hope in, in that, uh, you know, God promises us whatever we go through, uh, he'll always be with us and he'll never give us Amen. anything that we can't withstand. So uh, because of that, we, we can persevere. And uh, it's a story of overcoming. And uh, when I met Brad for the first time, uh, I saw his energy, I saw his enthusiasm, uh, his excitement, not only for the Lord, uh, but for what God had for him. And here's a yeah. guy that's overcome so many things. I mean, many of us are very fortunate. We can hear, we can see, you know, all of us deal with things in our life that we have to overcome, but this is a pretty <laughs> major issue. And yet Brad lived through it and, and walked through it and, and, and really was he himself a, a, a an example of that scripture and that faith uh, to continue no matter what, that God goes with you. Amen. Amen. And I think sometimes the things that we struggle with in life actually reveal our hidden talents, you know, and I am honestly... Yeah. Brad, I am so proud of you and all that you've overcome and what an inspiration you've been to us. And I know that there's also been people in your journey that helped you along the way. There is a scene in the film that is so touching where you're in the car with your dad and you're feeling doubtful. You know, we all suffer doubts, you know, can I really do this? And then he reminds you of all that you've already accomplished, all of your accomplishments, all that you've already accomplished you know, all that you've already overcome. Can you share more about the power of that scene and also the importance of blessing others and believing in them? Yes, I grew up in a family that believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. And words are very powerful. My mother and dad always spoke words that made me feel better about myself. And they instilled belief in myself when I didn't believe. And so early in my life, I relied on my parents a lot to get me through all those difficult situations. And so this movie shows um, a scene where I'm playing a tennis match and I'm losing, I'm losing really bad. And my parents weren't there at this match. And so I kept looking up on the mountain of Pepperdine University in Malibu, looking for them, wondering where they were, and they weren't there for the entire match. And yeah. so here I am for the first time without my parents cheering me on and giving me that encouragement they've always given me all throughout my life. And so I had to find something else to rely on. And so I said a simple prayer. I said, God, help me. And so I started focusing on God and, and uh, you know, just doing the best I could with everything I had trained to do up until that point. And the movie shows some of the things my mother and dad said to me growing up. And I kind of flash back to remember those words of encouragement to get me through this match, all at the same time relying on the power of God. Yeah, isn't it amazing how our words are so powerful? And when we say something actually nice to people and bless them, it has the power for that, that memory to come up in a time of need. And isn't that so much like God, our Father? Because not all of us in life have had the amazing, you know, parental figures that you did in this film that are portrayed. But God, our Father, is always whispering in our ear and our heart that He loves us, that He's, you know, has a plan that we can overcome and that He wants us to win, you know, to win at the important things in life, most importantly, to love, you know, and to have purpose and to bring Him glory in whatever our talents are. And He certainly have in this film. So thank you, Brad. Rick, I just want to jump over to you a minute and talk um, just about like the filming. You know, where did you guys film? Were there any challenges? You know, we as an audience get to watch the finished product and sit back and relax. But you had, you know, the behind the scenes of what this took to actually get the production into fruition. So can you share more about that? It was very exciting to work with the students at Liberty University, and we shot this in Lynchburg, Virginia. And there was a mentee-mentor relationship happening with our professionals in each department where the uh, students were able to, to join in. Uh, it was difficult to make the film with a period piece and dealing with everything from period cars to costumes to yeah. haircuts and everything else. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of fun, too, doing that. One of the biggest challenges was we had to have four different brads 
play different roles in the movie. And uh, we had to make sure, first of all, that our 20-year-old Brad was cast. And then we had to have everybody else look like him so it was believable. But then layer <laughs> on top of that, they need yeah. to be not just entry-level tennis players dinking it over the court. This was a professional-level tennis tournament, so they need to be able to play tennis. So uh, that was very critical, too, yeah. is that we we were able to to have people that knew how to play the game. And then they had to be great actors, and they had to be able to deal with mm-hmm. the whole death issue. So it was it was a challenge. I think that was probably the biggest challenge. But, uh, boy, we, we found some great actors, and uh, they played every role really, really well. And and uh, we were very pleased with, with how it came out. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and see, we are just watching the actors and thinking, wow, that just works, not even thinking about that you have the time period to deal with. And then matching what he looks like through the years and then having the, the actual talent behind all of that. So, I mean, it's amazing, but God provided and you found the right people. And, you know, we get to sit back and relax and enjoy that. Brad, you worked really, really hard to get to where you're at. How do you keep coming back? You know, and probably in in life now, you're still, you know, we all have trials to keep coming back, to keep pushing forward. And what is some advice you have for others who they have a goal, but they're afraid to go after it? Um, I think it's a good idea to have a daily routine to follow each day. I was fortunate when I was 13 to um, start bodybuilding, and I learned habits that I still apply today of uh, daily discipline, and I've taken the habits that I've learned from bodybuilding into my Christian walk with the Lord, uh, of putting God first, reading the Bible, praying, and all those kinds of things, because my relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important thing, and it gives me the uh, the strength, the courage, the wisdom to uh, overcome whatever it is that we need to overcome. While I was bodybuilding, I learned... Um, it was all about the body, and I built my self-confidence up. But when I was about 30 years old, all that self-confidence came crashing down, and I came to know Jesus, and I got filled mm-hmm. uh, with the Lord. And now I rely on Christ's confidence to get me through whatever it is. So having a daily discipline, a daily schedule is uh, important in overcoming obstacles that come our way. Yeah, yeah. And I, like you said, prayer perseverance, you know, continuing to try to not give up. It's such simple (laughs) and easy advice, but it's also so easy for us to fall into depression and anxieties and fears. And if we don't push past that fear, we're never, you know, and we do give up, then we're never going to know what God could have done, you know, had we moved forward. There's so many powerful scenes in this film. Rick, what was one of your favorite scenes and why? Well, you know, we're talking about never giving up. Uh, my favorite scene and favorite line in the movie is, you know, Brad wins this incredible tournament. He's down two sets, five games, 40 love, and uh, comes all the way back. And uh, in the end, he has this uh, sports announcer who's coming up and, and doing an interview with him for a magazine, for a newspaper article, and, sa- and says, Brad, you came all the way back. How did you do that? And, and his his mom looks at him and says, Brad, you've been coming back your whole life. And uh, that's so true. I mean, we look at the things that each of us face, uh, whether it's a bully at our school, whether it's, you know, boy, I just don't get this math. I'm not real good at sports or or whatever it happens to be that, that kind of makes you feel a little inferior to somebody else. Uh, you know, to, to be able to, to know that we can overcome. And Brad did that. He overcame the bullying he overcame, you know the the issue that he had with hearing, and uh, and it was the love and the support of his family. It was the nurturing of that, and and just a uh, a perseverance inside of him that kept driving to never give up and to overcome. So uh, that was my favorite part of the film for sure. Yeah, thank you, mine too. And because you know people not, are not always in life telling us such positive things. So when we actually have people who believe in us and to know that even when we don't have those those people in our lives, that God is the one that believes in us. He knows he asked us to believe in him, but he created us for a purpose and to definitely not to give up. We were not created to give up. 
Fred, you've overcome so much and the loss of your hearing was definitely a challenge, but you've not allowed it to hinder you from pursuing your dreams. Can you share a little bit more again how your faith in Christ has helped you through this journey? And, you know, how can we continue to go through the storms of life with Christ on our side? Well, I, I didn't come to know the Lord until I was about 30 years old. And I was reading a scripture off the back of a gentleman's t-shirt that I was training. And the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And, you know, there's a scene in the movie. I was just thinking about this where little Brad was at the audiologist's office getting his ears checked. And the audiologist would turn the volume of this machine up all the way and to test his hearing. And Brad didn't respond. But later on, a fire truck drove through the background and the flashing lights were, were you could see the flashing lights. And the audiologist, and Brad raises his hand first. And the audiologist said, Brad, did you hear the fire truck or did you see the lights? And little Brad says, I saw the lights. And I, I thought to myself, wow, that's exactly what happened with me in my faith walk. While I was younger and going to church, I didn't hear the word of God because I was deaf and uh, they didn't have closed captioning back in those days. And so, you know, I couldn't understand the word. My faith wasn't growing. And so later on, I met a gentleman who was always wearing T-shirts with scriptures on them. And so I was seeing the word and not hearing it, but seeing it. But God can work any way he wants. And so my faith was growing as I was reading these scriptures off the back of a guy's shirt. And so one day I, I realized, you know, that I was I had a problem. I had a sin problem. I was on my way to hell. And that, that can cause a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, and a lot of guilt and make you feel like giving up. But my friend said, Brad, are you ready to turn your life over to Jesus Christ and make him the Lord of your life? And I said, yes, because I didn't know what else to do. I was going the world's way for so long, and uh, that leads to a dead-end road. And so that day, I said, yes to Jesus Christ and invited him into my heart. After I said a simple prayer, asking Jesus into my heart, my eyes were open so I could see. My spiritual eyes were open. And I go home to read the Bible, and it was like, oh, how could I miss this? And uh, so... That was the greatest day in my life because even today, my number one priority is my personal relationship with Jesus and putting God first every day and growing in his grace by reading the word. And uh, as the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the entire renewal of your mind. And so I spent 30 years going the world's way, thinking the way the world thinks, doing what the world does. And... Uh, it's not good. So when I came to know Jesus, that was when the real transformation started to take place. And I'm still on that journey trying to grow in uh, my walk with the Lord. And so I'm getting better each day. Yeah. Not perfect, but getting better. <laughs> <laughs> We've made our decision. You're going to need to put him in the front row so that he can read your lips. Don't you think he should be at a deaf school? Gotcha. Bradley Min, your disability doesn't entitle you to stare at the window when I am teaching. Yeah, the principal's office. Goes against the sign of the bubble of the racket like that. That's too hard, you mouse. You want me to go easy on you, Brad? You want to win at tennis? Yes, sir, Mr. Davis. Then we're going to make you a champion. Well done, man. He can't hear you. I don't need him to hear. I need him to win. World Games for the deaf? What's that? Maybe you. To play for Team USA. Do you really think I'm that good? Yes. How does a scholarship sound? Do you know what Room 213 is? What am I doing wrong? Why don't these people like me? They don't think you're deaf. Cool. Big kudos to the coach of Team USA, Mike Lockyer, on their training. I'm Bill Austin. You use Starkey hearing devices, right? Ever since I was a little kid. Can I fit you with some new high-end models we're testing? Men somehow returned it. This is a perfect example of why death tennis is more difficult than the kind of matches I play. I would have heard the ball hit the strings, 
Osborne didn't. Well, well, thank God you're not perfect because that would make us all feel really bad about ourselves, you know. But I think there's a couple things that you just said that were so profound that I just want to touch on for a moment. Um, first of all, God spoke to you, but not through hearing. And a lot of times we think God doesn't speak to us. He will always find a way. You know, he spoke to you through the scripture. He spoke to you through seeing the light in your heart, seeing the light with your eyes. You know, a friend of yours that, you know, came to your aid and said to surrender to Jesus. Like God will speak to us. He will find a way where there's no way, you know, he parts the Red Sea. That is so profound. The second thing that you said that really just struck me and is going to, I believe, to, to strike everybody who sees this is that you weren't always perfect or loving God or, you know, didn't know. And no matter where we've been, no matter how many times we didn't give up or throw in the towel and think that God doesn't love us or life has no purpose or we went down the wrong road and bought the lies of the world or the lies from the enemy, God always takes us back. Jesus just wants us to surrender and to not give up. And every day is a new day. And like you said, the renewing of our mind, that's what not giving up is all about, the renewing of our mind. Rick, can you tell us how can we watch Never Give Up? Never Give Up is uh, going to be available on DVD. It'll be available streaming, uh, multiple places you'll be able to find it. We're even doing through the period of time after our theatrical release leading into the DVD and the uh, home video and all the other elements, uh, some, some opportunities to bring it to your community. So if you could go to our website, it's just nevergiveupfilm.com, and uh, you can see all the different ways to get the film. So uh, a lot of people, uh, and tennis programs are even doing this, where uh, a tennis program and community can license the movie and bring their people together and watch it and have an intimate time of connecting with the film and, and then maybe even some discussion around it. And then eventually, uh, toward the end of the year, around the holiday season, you'll be able to buy the DVD and make it available to your friends and family and use it as a gift. We hope you'll do that. And uh, But yeah, all those ways you can gift. find on yeah. our website. Yeah, so just go to nevergiveupfilm.com and we'll be updating all the time on different ways you can see the film. Uh, there'll be a button there where you can click and 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 send it to your local community, to your community center, to your church, to whatever, to be able to even license the film and show it that way in an audience. Wow. Well, thank you. There's so many ways, right, to watch it. And I love how you're going also more intimately, that this can be a community thing, you know, as well as that deep personal relationship. Um, I just can't thank you both enough for being here today, for sharing the heart and passion about this for following God's guidance to get this made. It is a story that we all can relate to, that we all need to hear. And I just thank you for your witness and your testimony. And Brad, thank you for not giving up. Thank you. Appreciate it. God bless you. For all of you watching, Never Give Up is a beautiful film that shows the power of prayer and perseverance. I can't wait for you to see it. And I hope to see you all again real soon. God be with you. Shalom. Problems, worries, sadness. Are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear.